Hi, I'm Sandy and I'm a member of Sir Real Estate. We are a team of sustainable enthusiasts from Monash University in Australia dedicated to designing a resilient home for new families. Presenting with me today will be Ye, Shristi, Sarah and Owen. Our presentation will cover five main aspects of our design. These include innovative architecture, sustainability, resilience, net zero energy and affordability. We have created a home for suburban single families which incorporates environmental considerations without compromising on affordability. The idea for this design originated from the devastation we witnessed during the 2019 to 2020 bushfires in Australia. The world watched the extent of damage and loss suffered by our country, killing at least 1 billion animals and scorching approximately 12 million acres of land. Prompted by the need to prevent the same amount of devastation, we have designed a home that can withstand the tough, ever-changing climate we live in. We understand the uncertainty involved in buying a new family home. New families looking to invest in a home should have every reason to expect longevity and resilience. Our home allows potential buyers to have the peace of mind that comes with a fire-resistant design, as well as all the benefits of net zero energy production. We have incorporated quality with affordability to ensure our home is attainable for the average Australian family. Behind this design is a team of nine students committed to bringing our buyers the best of innovation, quality and comfort. Our motto at Monash University is I am still learning. As a team, we have spent time refining our design to make sure it incorporates our best ideas. This kind of structure has allowed Monash's materials engineering department to rank ninth in the world and Monash's civil engineering program to claim the 21st position in the QS World University rankings. Our team advisor, Professor Brandon Winfrey, specialises in water technology and has directed us every step of the way. Our attention to detail can be attributed to our team leader, Sarah Yin, who is completing her Bachelor's in Materials Engineering and Science. Our consulting team on this project is our diverse and experienced team. Among these are our industry partners, including Jacobs Engineering Group, Southeast Water and Stibel Ultron, who have given us invaluable advice based on real-life scenarios. Now, I will pass you over to Ye to introduce our site details and the house layout. Thanks, Sandy. Hi, I'm Ye. For the site details, our house locates in Tarnit, Victoria, with a climate zone of 6, which is equivalent to a US climate zone 3, similar to San Francisco. We have chosen this suburb because it is one of the largest and fastest growing places in Victoria. Also, Health and well-being are key focus points of the city council, which align with our design goals. This area favors new and growing families, with 15% more affordable housing than that in the Melbourne region. Generally, it has a mild temperature, but summer and winter can exceed the range of human comfort, which was part of our design focus for HVAC system. Also, Given that Tarnit resides in the bushfire pro zone, compliance with bushfire attack level 12.5 will be needed to protect against amber attacks and low radiant heat. So the durability during and after a bushfire is as important as water shortage is likely to follow such events. These reasons reiterate the need for climate resilient, affordable and sustainable living for new families in Australia. The house is designed for a young family consisting of one to three children and parents, so we have two single bedrooms and a master bedroom with walk-in closet and a private bathroom. We also have one living room and an open kitchen, another toilet, a garage and a garden. After the general introduction, let's move to sustainability point of view. This context is highly related to the material selection procedure. We considerate embodied energy, recyclability, mechanics and cost to select sustainable building materials for our house. Then we screen out material types that were non-renewable and to minimize the embodied energy. After the whole material selection, we did life cycle analysis for each of the material we have chosen, such as terracotta roof tile for exterior finish and recycled gypsum board for vapor control. The overall life cycle considering from extraction and manufacture all the way to waste disposal and recycling includes intended service life. The design choice to make the majority of the house timber with timber framing and timber siding allow us to minimize the carbon footprint of the house. 
Typically, a conventional brick house will have twice the carbon footprint than a wooden house, and can reduce the environmental impacts by up to 61 percent. We reduced the amount of concrete used for the foundation of the house by having a suspended timber floor. This significantly reduced the amount of carbon emissions generated over the life cycle. Helps to minimize the embodied environmental impact from the construction. There are also trade-offs on deciding the materials regarding sustainability, such as to ensuring air tightness. We used polyethylene ground cover and a small amount of spray foam for the joints. However, its serviceable lifetime is the same as the house. This would be a worthwhile trade-off in the long term. Next, Rishti will talk about the architecture details. Thanks, Yue. A sustainability contest is also highly related to the inherent architecture and design of the house. Seamlessly integrating form and function creates a space that is welcoming to young families desiring a fresh start and to make the space their own. Firstly, considering the site plan, there are many key features, including conservation of water, passive strategies, self-sustaining principles, and convenience, which are key factors. Looking at the plot itself, the landscaping choices encourage Australian culture. Enjoying the outdoors is a key part of Australian culture through barbecues and alfresco dining. The use of native Australian flora is imperative in the conservation of water, as this type of plant life is accustomed to harsh Australian conditions. Additionally, utilizing a majority of Australian plants, including the edible finger lamb tree, promotes indigenous practices and pays homage to the traditional owners of the land. The use of aromatic plants such as lavender and kangaroo paw also have insect repelling properties. By blanketing the plot in weeping grass and dwarf mondo grass, we reduce maintenance and water consumption, making it easier for any busy young family. By including vegetable and herb gardens, we are creating a learning environment for young Australians and encouraging families to be as self-sustaining as possible. The central position of the house on the plot lends itself to reducing energy consumption. This also provides access to optimal conditions for wind direction in relation to passive heating and cooling. Looking at the location of the house, we can see that it is located close to a variety of both primary and secondary schools. There are plenty of nearby shopping centres, perfect for family-friendly weekend activities. One key element in the choice of site is the proximity of public transport, especially leading to the CBD. Here we can see that Tarnit Station is very accessible via car and even public transport, ideal for 9 to 5 working parents. While the site is important in the design, external elements such as materiality and considering the orientation of the external features influence the architecture. One advantage of our materials is that they are locally sourced, reducing transportation and associated energy costs. Terracotta tiles have high insulating capabilities in addition to withstanding a wide range of weather conditions, including ice and high temperatures. These tiles are low maintenance, they don't warp in extreme heat and do not discolour. In keeping with our affordability goal, we chose these tiles as they are cost effective, being one of the cheapest tiles on the market. Additionally, the use of spotted gum and native Australian tree is perfect for bushfire prone areas as the wood is naturally fire resistant. In addition to being a strong hardwood, the thermal insulation properties and long-term stability of the material lend itself to being a modern quintessential Australian cladding. The external features also play an important role in convenience and sustainability. Keeping vegetable and herb gardens near the kitchen allows them to be easily accessed and frequently used. Our water tank is located close to our heating system, reducing the amount of piping required to utilise rainwater. Additionally, outdoor living and dining areas where anyone can enjoy the warm Australian sun are also great spaces for entertaining. Moving on to look at the design of the house itself, key features of the architecture include an open floor plan and orientation-based design, in addition to creating a multifunctional house for those who wish to make it their own and to optimise passive design principles. Looking at the living arrangements, flexibility is maximised in living and bedroom spaces, allowing for these spaces to be more modular and open. The standard arrangement shows a three-bedroom house with simple dining and living arrangement. Moving on, the living spaces can be further arranged to include a home office or to open the kitchen for more large-scale entertainment, leading to the alfresco area. Alternatively, bedrooms can be arranged to include a home office or provide playrooms for families with younger children. Our house has been accumulated to encourage passive design. Cross-ventilation, specifically from the front and back doors, allows for passive airflow. Sunlight penetration is maximised using north-facing windows 
As we can see, solar penetration is more concentrated in winter months, which is advantageous for ensuring more frequently used spaces are heated evenly throughout the cold season. Finally, we must also consider our interior design. Smaller features like storage have a big impact when considering house design. By including plenty of a general internal storage via linen cupboards and floor-to-ceiling bedroom storage in each room, any family can keep their space as clutter-free as they would like. On the left, we can see internal timber cladding and flooring, which creates a biophilic connection, encouraging a more grounded and environmentally conscious outlook on the landscape. I'll now pass on to Sarah to discuss the Resilience Design Goal. Thanks, Shushti. Hi, I'm Sarah. Owen and I will now discuss the design aspects associated with our Resilience Design Goal. I'll be going over the engineering features and how they enhance the resilience of the house overall. Firstly, I'll be going over the details of our building enclosure. Here we can see a cross section of the house. Looking from the exterior to the interior, we have our spotted gum timber siding, which is from a native Australian tree and is bushfire resistant in nature. Then we have our drained and vented air cavity. Behind that, we have our R6 mineral wool rigid insulation. It's stacked in a staggered manner to reduce thermal bridging. Then we have our house wrap adhered to some plywood sheathing, and this acts as the water, air, and vapor barrier for the house. Behind that, we have our frame cavity, which is filled with R15 earth wool bat insulation. Both our rigid and bat insulation are non-combustible, which helps to make the house more resilient in the case of a bushfire. For our R53 roof system, it's similar to the wall system, except that we've replaced the house wrap with a roof sacking material. And this is a little bit more weather durable and isn't as likely to tear when we install the roof tiles. The design choice of having an unvented attic space ensures that um, there's no way for the ambers to enter the attic space through the venting system in case of a bushfire. Regarding the R31 foundation system, it is again analogous to the walls and features a suspended timber floor. The windows and glass doors of the house will be triple glazed and have U values of 0.24. We'll be using adhesive pill and stick sub seals under them and flashings around them to ensure that there's a continuous uh, water control layer with the walls. Now I'll be going over the building systems of the house. We try to centralize the utilities and equipment in order to maximize uh, the efficiency and also optimize the maintenance for the occupants. For our HVAC system, we have a air source heat pump that provides the heating and cooling, while a central air handler distributes the air through ceiling mounted ducting. Using the velocity reduction method, we calculated the uh, volume flow rates using the heating and cooling loads of the house and chose duct sizings of 20 and 12 inches for our supply and exhaust ducts respectively. Our heat pump has a heating seasonal performance factor of 9.5 out of 10.2. Next to our heat pump, we have our heat recovery ventilator which basically uses a heat exchanger to recycle the warmth or coolness of the exhaust air coming from the heat pump to put that energy back into our house with fresh air. Regarding our water system, we tried to centralize our water fixtures in order to minimize the heat loss uh, through the piping system. We've also put our 1,850-gallon rainwater tank adjacent to the vegetable garden for the convenience of the occupants. Now I'll be handing it over to Owen. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, I'm Owen. Australia has seen the highest forest fire danger index, which is a common measure of fire weather conditions recently. 
Hence, several strategies are employed to ensure our design is resilient to bushfire. The measures are in accordance to Australian building standard and they aim to prevent the collections of amber which may catch fire if left unattended to. They include landscaping design which entails building away from steep hillsides and bushes, sprinkler system to extinguish fires, a 1.8k gallon water tank for water supply, Fire break between nearby vegetation and the house, fully suck gutter guards to help keep the gutters clear, cascade windows which can act as a potential escape route, the glasses are toughened to prevent shattering, and a self design app to educate and alert occupants regarding evacuation during bushfire attack. Moving on, I'm going to talk about the energy performance of the design and how we achieve net zero energy consumption. Surrey Estate is a sustainable and innovative net zero housing with self-consumption of solar power generation. It has an annual energy consumption as low as 8,323 kilowatt hours, which is equivalent to 5.87 kilowatt hours per square foot. More impressively, heating accounts for only 30% of the consumption per year. Her score of negative 25 and 35 were also obtained with and without PV system respectively. Our approaches to attaining net zero include establishing a production strategy of around 10% above the consumption target as buildings generally consume slightly more and PV energy sources generate slightly less than predicted, referring to green credentials such as NetHurst and GreenStar. NetHurst measures the thermal performance of residential buildings in Australia whereas GreenStar is equivalent to LEED in the US. The intent is to set a benchmark for future sustainable housing projects by achieving more than what is required in the green building rating tools mentioned. Using energy star rated appliances and lightings and focusing on passive energy design. It involves setting a window to wall ratio of around 15% while placing more windows in the north facing side of the house. We also put heavy emphasis on cross flow ventilation and thermal zoning, which is a way to heat up certain parts of the house instead of the entire house. We also ensure that all values incorporated are as high as possible. Implementing Building Automation System, also known as BAS, via our self-designed app, Surveyor Power. It involves controlling the lighting and appliances according to the occupant's frequency or activity such as turning off the lights and appliances when the homeowners are away or asleep. It also includes gamified modules to induce behavioural change within the homeowners. The last but most important step is always the integration of PV system. We installed 12 solar panels in the house, as well as a Tesla power wall which is able to power up the house during grid disruptions. There is also a possibility of transferring electricity back to the house via an electric vehicle. Yes, you heard me right. When considering affordability, our team was aware that house and land prices are highly variable depending on location, land and house size, market demand and market appeal. We had to ensure that our buyers would be purchasing the house at a cost within the financial capability of their household. Melbourne's housing market is ranked as one of the most severely unaffordable in the world and this is based on house price to income ratio. It can roughly be compared to the house market in Santa Cruz. This makes it affordability all the more relevant as growing families should not have to deal with the stress of a tight budget. Part of our decision to build in Tani was based on the projected above average growth by ABC News. Tani is an affordable, burgeoning outer west suburb of contemporary family homes, making it a perfect location for a new family planning on growing. Our target market for this design is the average working young Australian family. 15% of Tiny homes are currently inhabited by young families. Homes in Tiny are also 15% more affordable than homes in the inner Melbourne city region. The average price of a home in Tiny is $277,000. This means that families tend to benefit from buying houses in outer suburban areas. We estimated that the minimum income necessary to afford a home like this was about the same as the average household income, which is $72,282.
We also used the low bracket cost to build a home in Victoria to amend our construction costs. Construction costs were minimised with research into material cost analysis, whereas ongoing living costs were reduced with inbuilt features such as solar panels and low consumption appliances. This not only benefits our estimation costs, but also our energy production. Our estimates were based off rough values and therefore further work is required to confirm our financial breakdown. A major decision in cost-benefit analysis was including the Tesla solar battery power wall, costing $7,120. It was decided that the advantages of this power wall were worth the extra cost and the payback period of approximately 7 years was reasonable. Our final estimation of construction costs were based off permits, insurance, roofs, exterior walls, foundation, interior walls, and more. The estimated value came to $109,611. We found this cost to be mid-range and acceptable in terms of providing our buyers with the best value for money. In terms of life cycle costs, it is estimated that 80% of the expenses of a building are incurred during usage. We estimate our life cycle cost to be similar to the cost of a standard code compliant building. The final consideration for costs are operational and maintenance costs. The 1% rule here was used to determine financial feasibility. That is, homeowners should typically set aside 1% of the purchase price of their home for ongoing maintenance. We estimate that the greatest portion of this cost will go to utilities including electricity, water, internet provider service, council rates, cable TV, and our HVAC and heater system upkeep. Now I'll pass you over to Shrishti to conclude. Overall, we have tried to curate a family-friendly, flexible house that focuses on key design goals. Considering the heavily widespread bushfires that devastated most of New South Wales and Western Victoria, bushfire resilience has been an important focus. In this housing market, with most young Australians wondering if even considering purchasing a house is a solid investment, we have created a house that is extremely affordable and has many advantages in its location. Caring about the environment and understanding climate change is becoming increasingly more essential when considering a house, which we have encouraged not only through net zero energy, but also through materiality and form, really allowing passive design strategies to shine. This is Surreal Estate, and we would like to thank you so much for your time.